In this meditation, I was in the basement of my soul. So this particular day, I was really busy. I was struggling to try to find time to meditate, but I found a little time and said, all right, let's get into it. Let's do it. I was kind of rushing, trying to squeeze one in in the middle of the day there. So I put on an eye mask and I start uh, meditating. And, um, you know, I always go into meditations with no expectations. Um, I never expect or trying to see anything. I just kind of go in and just do the work, spend the time with it. And if that happens, it happens. It's cool. But I, I don't really care if it happens or if it doesn't. And I think that is kind of important. That's why I'm sharing it. Um, I think you can't you can't go into a meditation every time just kind of like all right, uh, this has got to this has got to happen this time. I want to I want to have something happen to me. Uh, just kind of go in there, and uh, the the work is being done. Uh, I'm I'm convinced that the long lasting changes come from just these kind of mundane meditations that happen every day. That there's m- no profound experience. Now, these profound experiences are fun, they're interesting, and they can be uh, somewhat a little bit life-changing. You can get a different perspective on your life. But I don't think I don't believe that they have to happen in order to see big benefits in, in meditation. So uh, this particular one, uh, meditation, I was just uh, meditating. Everything was going, uh, you know, it was just planned. And, um, but then all of a sudden, I started having all these kind of just things come up things that I was seeing and I was just kind of going on this little journey and just to, and I was just giving up and just kind of going along for the ride. And as I did, I ended up in this place that um, I don't, I didn't really spend a whole lot of time there, but a lot happened in a short amount of time. And so I kind of show up to, to this place and uh, the, and um, the best I could describe it is it was the basement of my soul. And there's some things in meditation uh, that uh, are just understood. You don't have to read it. You don't have to think about it. It's just almost kind of like gets inserted into your mind or you just download the information. And uh, they're, they're, without a doubt, you know exactly what's going on sometimes. And uh, when I was in this place, the, the meditation kind of took me on this journey. I ended up in a place to where I knew I was in the basement of my soul. And um, it was dark. It was cold. It was it was scary. You know, there was a lot going on down. There was a lot of chaos happening and uh, just stuff flying around. It was, um, I can't really tell you what was flying around, but it's just, it's that kind of feeling of just chaos, just distractions everywhere. But I was down there and I was kind of in this room, this big room, not not this room, but I was in a room where uh, um there was like a big hole within the ground or maybe just a big space. Was, but there was another side of the room. So there was this big hole that was separating the rooms. And I had my family member on the other side that I've been struggling with for a long time in our relationship. I just held a lot of resentment towards each other, a lot of frustrations and just a lot of just bitterness. But And so as we're down there in this room, and there's this big space in between, in the middle of this room. Uh, there's all this chaos going on. Uh, there's just stuff flying down into this hole, just this this gap in the room. And I couldn't tell you what it was, but it was just <laughs> stuff flying through there. And the only thing I could come up with was that it was all this junk and crap that I've been holding on to for a long time. It's just getting flushed down. Just <laughs> It was just leaving. But this big gap that was down there, you know, it was pretty wide. You know, you didn't want to just jump over it. Um, It just looked like it was a hole into eternity. Like uh, there was just space down there, like stars. You didn't want to fall into that hole. That's what I gathered from this meditation. So myself and this family member that I've been struggling with for a long time were on the other side. And like I said, both of us were, uh, we were working. We were working hard. What were we were working on, I have no idea. But we were sitting there hammering nails and throwing wood around. And uh, But we were working on something. And 
we sat there and we saw each other. We were both kind of arg- not arguing, but we were going back and forth like, hey, man, good. come on over here. It's like, no, no, no. You come over here, man. And that space in between there, nobody wanted to jump over it, you know. Nobody wanted to take that chance or take that risk. And uh, that's what I was gathering because that's how I felt. It's like, nah, man, I'm not going over there. You come over here, dude. That's, I'm not falling down on that thing. And um, so as that was happening, we kind of went back and forth and we're sitting there trying to figure out, like, how, how are we going to get over there? How are we going to get together, you know? And uh, all of a sudden, uh, that family member kind of reached out his arm over and kind of extended trying to reach to me. And right as he did that, it was like everything, I understood exactly where he stood and I understood where I was stood. And I could see it. I could feel it. I could, I could, it was in my mind intellectually, um, emotionally. It was hidden from all different, every different angle. There was a big understanding of, I understood exactly where he stood with me and what his intentions were. So I think that's what meditation does, is it? It gives you a perspective and really gets you in on the inside of what's really going on to where once you kind of have that information, you're willing to let go and you can understand and it's okay. It's um, it's kind of like what's reminding me of just like here and when we're living everyday life, you know, you hear of like somebody getting a divorce and then everybody's mind kind of immediately goes, well, what happened? And we're all doing it for selfish reasons. If you, Once you can find out what happened to that person, you kind of feel better about it. Even if it's good or bad, you at least know which direction it's going. Or if someone dies, I mean, most people, I'm not going to say everybody, but most people, when someone passes away, everyone's first question is, is what happened? Like, what happened to that person? I had no idea. And then once you hear, oh, it was this or it was that, then... You could start to deal with it. You could start to, it's not good, but you at least know what, what direction you're going. So I almost feel like this was a similar thing that once he reached out to me, because I was in a meditation, you can understand a lot more than just words. And, uh, and because of that, I was able to truly understand where he stood and where I stood and how, those, how we both were towards each other. That I was, I was able to let go of all that stuff. I mean, I realized I should have let go of it a long time ago, but I was stubborn. And uh, so meditation helped me get to that place to be able to look at that family member in a different way and uh, actually has improved our relationship uh, a lot more since then. So that was um, a meditation that I had and I thought I would share it with you. And so if you... Like this video, um, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to follow my channel, hit the subscribe button. And right now would be a good time to do it. Meditation can be frustrating. Um, it was for me for a long time, you know. Um, but I will say you can't go in there with an agenda. If you go in there with an agenda, it's just not going to work out. You have to truly just kind of just show up and just let it do whatever it's going to do. Because uh, that's what um, meditation, ulti- when you're meditating, that's ultimately what happens. You don't have any control over the, what happens in these meditations. And if you think you do, then you're probably not really meditating anyway. So you kind of have to just get over yourself. You got to quit worrying about how to design and control how these meditations go. Um I personally think the reason why you're trying to control these meditations or, you know, try to make them go a certain way, you know, with the kind of music, I want want this music to happen and I want this to happen in the meditation. And you try to, I call them designer meditations where you, you know, the people that are trying to design these meditations a certain way. And I think they're trying to design them that way to, so they feel comfortable because when you get in there and you just start, you have a mask on and your thoughts start, thoughts start coming up. You know, you know it's coming from a place that uh, you, you, stuff's coming up that you don't want to see. And um, 
So you get frustrated. That's why people can't go past five or 10 minutes of meditating, I believe. Because they know whatever's starting to come up, it may not be that bad now, but the stuff that's coming behind all that, it's not far behind and they don't want to look at it. And um, you have to get to a place to where you're okay with looking at it. It's, this is not, uh, you know, you're not hiking uh, Kilimanjaro. You're not jumping off a cliff. You're typically just sitting on a couch normally and you're just closing your eyes. You've got to be safe. You're in no danger. Even though when these thoughts come up, it feels like it could be frustrating. But you have to get over yourself. They're just thoughts. They're stuff you've been holding on to. When they come up, you just have to just look at them and be okay with it. And that's really when the meditating really starts to take over and really starts to get good, in my opinion. But um, anyway, I just wanted to share this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you want to like this video and subscribe, right now would be a good time to do it.